We are at Park Life in San Francisco. I'm Courtney Johnson, and this is my new show of paintings titled See You Next Tuesday. For this work, I am continuing with my sort of two year investigation of uh, painting um, a world inhabited by wild and unhinged women. And specifically with these paintings in here, I'm looking at or thinking about what would be considered problematic behaviors uh, in women, such as bitchiness and moodiness uh, and premenstrual and imagining what that looks like in a very exaggerated way. And I feel like I'm really embracing this melodrama of, of females. And also with this a lot, looking at um, how it's physically manifested and taking on sort of this fantastical idea of it where in a world where this behavior is possible to its full extent, you know, uh, nails can grow out like claws and teeth can be sharp like shark's teeth and expressions become much more um, crazed. And also I'm, I've been thinking a lot about the idea that behavior could then manifest itself into some sort of other physical being, like some sort of rage monster. So in some of the works there are these kind of um, sea creatures, these sort of hybrid sea creatures that are familiar, much like the women, but also very foreign. And, and as I've been doing this painting, especially in grad school when I had to write a thesis paper, you know, I started learning so much about this conversation that already exists in the world, like with um, uh, ancient Greek myths, um, like a lot of French feminism from the 60s that, that really embodies these ideas that I'm interested in, where women have this wildness and origin, you know, and, and are these kind of savage creatures. And I, I, so I, what I did was take stories and events and fictionalize them to write an actual story with actual characters as a way to recontextualize this and a way to learn more about it and even have a broader vocabulary within my painting. So I never felt like I was illustrating my paintings, but instead just like discovering new ways to learn about this topic. What I'm gonna read is a truncated version of an already short story titled Raving Ones. Five women inhabit the ocean side of the dunes. They came to live there at different times. The town side of the dunes isn't sure when or what cosmic rage they were born from. There are stories for each woman, and each take on the situation is extraordinary, as it should be, considering the nature of these females. The town people do their thing day by day. The town is not sunny, and it is always trying to cover up and build over what it actually is. Many unnamed people in its history have died. Drifters, drunks, and hundreds of throwaways visited the ocean and expansive dunes and got lost there. It is a hobo village that was once nothing more than the dunes that they refuse, with good reason, to approach. It does not matter where the town folk stand, they get glimpses of the happenings on the other side. Every now and then, something is seen and often things are heard. Anna May is maybe the head of the women living on the dunes. This is assumed because she is the loudest, most animated. She will parade herself on a high dune and has even ventured a block into town. When this happens, she creates a panic. A vomit-inducing fear erupts in the streets. It is not just hearsay that she has killed folks in the town. There are witnesses who have seen Anna Mae run down a street, hands bloodied, grasping guts, screaming and laughing like a banshee, like a wild animal hunter. Folks have also heard interactions between the women on the dunes. They sound drunk, are incredibly loud, screaming at all hours, and laughing fully. Two of the women, Ginny and Chantel spend the most time in the ocean. Some folks say they swam to the town from somewhere else. Others have faint memories of them as children, living as their neighbors. No one can reliably remember. There are no keepsakes or markers of time in events. Angel spends the least time in the ocean. Sometimes she runs the beach, but mostly she hides in the dunes. Her glassy eyes are the ones that people always think are looking back at them from the dunes. Ruth will not go into town, but like Anna Mae, takes to the dunes, beach, and ocean. She is petite, but wildly adorned with scraps of fabric and ill-matching garments, making her presence grand. Fishing is no longer a mainstay of the town's economy. Thomas and Tilla saw the women, all but Angel, feverishly rip the flesh off of a shark with their bare hands from his fishing boat. 
Fortunate for Thomas, he was at a distance from the mayhem. He observed the event through his binoculars. He was not harmed, but anime has headed out for him ever since. She and the others are vengeful, without apparent cause. Four surfers who were abducted during the days that people weren't taking the women seriously. Their boards are posted in the dunes, visible to the town, slowly falling to pieces. The surfers were obviously never seen again, no witnesses there. Anime and Ruth on occasion sit against the boards and tell jokes to each other, cackling and belligerently singing. Reading the town of these possessed creatures has proven futile. It's as though they are impervious to guns. Once, shots were fired at close range, accomplishing nothing. Bullets are like bee stings. Their assembly will not be prevented, for there is no authority over them. Nobody tries anymore. Though the women's rants are often unintelligible, it's as though they're collectively mocking. This? You mean this here? You cannot defeat it. It is God. They scream until hoarse, pass out wherever, and start again at their whim. The women have become part of the town's folk way of life. The town is used to the agitation, like someone gets used to a rattlesnake in their room. A missing person, or a carcass, found here and there over the years, and it's accepted part of how things go. Not that folks are happy about it. The town itself isn't so stable, in any sense of the word. Its foundation is sand. But where else would these rejects live? They have no conviction or charisma. Even their own story is a mystery to them. They are a town of vagrant outsiders, vulnerable to a small group of others. The women have been crying more often. Their weeping is the most unsettling sound. Change in the women's behavior fills the town with anxiety. There is no action on the women's part to put the town at ease. The crying subsides within a couple of weeks. Chantel and Jenny are swimming in the ocean. They have wetsuits and can take the cold all day. They are hunched over playing in the shallow surf, which extends far during high tide. Anna Mae and Ruth join them. They are cold, only wearing bathing suits, but it is such an exhilarating fun time that they don't mind. The women are in a circle, knee deep in the water, laughing and making voices at each other. Angel stands on the beach, just out of the wave's reach, watching them, having a good time herself. The women's particular stretch of water has an especially strong current. There, the water is always cold, gray, and thrashing. No matter how many times it is looked upon, this part of the coast always feels new.